even though they had just won a war against the most powerful country on the planet, in the 1780s to the rest of the world, America was a young country and sort of a joke. Why had America only produced one great man, Benjamin Franklin? Franklin was huge in Europe. The most popular theory about America came from a French nobleman named Count Joël Louis Le Grand Buffon. Count B, based on the word of some less than impressed French friends, claimed that the continent had just been raised from the sea. It was covered in swamps and too humid and soft compared to the hard, dry land of Europe. Buffon had never been to America. This made life in America just a degenerate copy of Europe's. If you brought animals or plants from Europe to America, their offspring would be smaller and inferior as well. This even applied to humans. So you better not have any babies in America. Have I mentioned that Buffon had never been to America? But this theory became really popular and started to appear in textbooks and even poetry. This wasn't good news for a fresh country that needed people to move there and for Europe to buy its goods. Enter the new American ambassador to France, a young Thomas Jefferson. This was personal. TJ writes all his founder friends for help in proving this dangerous Frenchman wrong. James Madison sent Jefferson the detailed measurements of a Virginian weasel, even down to the distance between it's two naughty parts. Jefferson writes his first and only book, which included a massive table of animal measurements compared to Europe's, such as the 12 pound US otter compared to the nine pound European otter. He even sends Buffon on American cougar pelt and mastodon fossils. None of this is good enough for Buffon. And over an awkward dinner, Jefferson has an idea. He starts a flurry of letters to his fellow founders with a task more precious than they could imagine. He needed a moose, and he needed one fast. Good news, Mr. Jefferson. John Sullivan, the governor of New Hampshire, bagged a seven foot tall moose. Wonderful. The bad news, it's 20 miles from the nearest road. It would take 20 men two full weeks to drag the dead moose through the snow to the governor. By the time it arrives in his office, the moose was starting to decay, it had lost most of its fur, and somehow its antlers were missing. Not wanting to disappoint the writer of the Declaration of Independence, the governor packs up the mangled moose with a bunch of deer antlers as replacements and ships it off to Paris. When it finally arrives in Paris, one year later, Thomas Jefferson had no choice but to take the largest pair of deer antlers, nail them onto the stuffed moose, and send them to Buffon with a note to, well, use his imagination for what it used to look like. So. Did this mighty moose change Buffon's mind? No one knows. He died a few days after it arrived. Let's just pretend he died of shock over how wrong he was. The theory of American degeneracy wouldn't go away for another 70 years, well beyond the death of Thomas Jefferson, who would continue to fight it into his presidency. At his funeral, his friend giving his eulogy would call this fight Jefferson's personal second revolutionary war. Thank you.